Hi, so I figured your parents will ask you what you're doing in school, and so you're probably going to complain about statically indeterminate problems. So I thought I'd come up with statically indeterminate problems that even your parents can understand. All right, so let's start off with a spring. All right, and the spring's original length, we'll call that L naught. Okay, if we expand this spring, if we expand this spring and we make it longer, then it now has some new length, which will be L naught plus delta. And we know that for a spring, the force required to pull this is equal to the spring constant times the displacement delta. Okay, so if there's a force applied here, then there's also uh, an equal and opposite reaction by Newton's third law. So there's some reaction here, we'll call it RA. So in this case, I pull with a, a force F. There's a reaction RA, and the reaction RA must be equal to F. So I have all the forces balanced here. And I have basically Hooke's law for a spring that tells me the, dis the distance the spring will expand if I apply some force. Okay, this is a statically determinate problem because the reaction here at A doesn't really depend on the spring constant K at all. However, I can make a different example where this is not the case. So for example, if I take two springs, call this spring 1 and this spring 2, and I place these between two solid walls, that's what these dashed lines indicate. So this is spring 2, and now I apply some force at this dot. And suppose I want to know what the reaction force is. RA on the left and RB on the right R. Okay, so again we have thir uh, Newton's third law which says that all of these forces must balance. So this says that all the forces going to the left, that's RA, must be equal to all the forces going to the right, that's F plus RB. Okay, but, but this doesn't tell us what RA is, because we don't know what RB is. And F is some force that we apply, so we know F. But we, we have one equation and two unknowns here. Well, what else do we have? We have Hooke's law for both of these springs. So I could say the force of spring 1 is equal to K1, the, the constant, uh, the spring constant for that spring, times the, dis the displacement of that first uh, spring. And I could say the same thing about the second one. So the force in the second spring is some constant, K2, times the amount I displace it. Okay, well, what are, what are F1 and F2? Well, if I wanted to, I could make a little, uh, I could make a balance box, excuse me. So that means I, I make a box like this, and I say, well, what, is, what does F1 have to be? That's the force at which I'm pulling this spring right here. Well, what is that? Well, F1 has to be balancing RA. So this means that F1 is RA. So I can just rewrite these as RA equals K1 delta 1. And I can make a similar argument about the second spring. So if I had this spring right here, and I asked what is F2, the amount that I'm pulling this spring, well F2 you can see is R, RB, so I'll replace F2 with RB. Okay, so now I have this equation, 
where f is known, but I don't know ra and I don't know rb. And now I have another, I have two equations, Hooke's law for each one of my springs. But again, I have, uh, I, I don't know ra and I don't know rb, but I also don't know delta 1 and delta 2. So now I've got four unknowns and three equations. So I need one more equation to finish this up. And because these are solid walls, my last equation is going to tell me that the amount that I extend the first spring is the same amount that I have to contract the second spring. So the amount I extend the first spring is delta 1, and that has to be equal to the amount I contract the second spring. So that's negative delta 2. So again, things are positive. The, the sign convention in class has always been things are positive when you stretch them, and they're negative when you contract them. So this is, uh, this is our, our kinematic equation. Um, and now I have four equations and four unknowns, so I can solve this. And I'll solve it by taking equations two and inserting them into equation three. So let me do that up top so you can see it. So when I put equation 2, that's uh, these things, I put these in equation 3, I find that Ra over K1 has to be equal to negative delta 2, which is Rb over K2. Okay, so now I've inserted these into here. And so I've, I've basically, instead of having all of these equations, I just have this equation. So I can get rid of these. So these are equations 2 and 3 put together. So now I'm only left with two equations and two unknowns. So what I'm going to do is, since I want to find Ra, um, I'm just going to take, um, I'll take, I could do whatever I want, really. But I'll take uh, RB, and I'll solve for RB here. So RB is RA minus F. And then I'll take this RB and plug it into our new equation here. So I have RA over K1 is equal to negative RB, which is now RA minus F. divided by k2. And I could bring this to the other side, so then I have Ra uh, over k1 plus Ra over k2. So I'll pull the Ra out. And that's got to be negative, negative f, so it's just f over k2. So then if I want Ra, I can just divide by this. So I have F divided by uh, K2 times 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2. And then I can just do some algebraic manipulation to make this look a little bit nicer. So I'll put the K2 inside this parentheses. And then I'll multiply the top and bottom by K K1. OK, and this is my final expression. So this is how you find the reaction force on a statically indeterminate problem. And I guess uh, right now I could, I could check to make sure uh, this thing makes sense. So for example, if I didn't have spring 2, then K2 would be equal to
No, I had, yeah. All right. Goofed up the last part. Ah. That's just an F. I don't know where that subscript two came from. Anyway, so I've got F over this. So if I didn't have the second spring, then K2 would be zero, and then I would have RA equal to F, which is the same thing you would expect if you just had one spring. Sorry about that goof up at the last moment. Uh, anyway, now your, now your parents think I'm a doofus. So that's <laughs> what it's usually like in class, but I think I did get the right answer, and that's how you solve a statically indeterminate problem. Thanks. Bye-bye.